So, you know how Cyber Monday... Hmm. So, you know how last week I was talking about getting something for Cyber Monday for myself? Mostly about how I was talking about the first real upgrade to the LMG? Well... Happy Monday morning. Kyle here and I'm the Geek and Dad. Welcome back to the YouTube channel on this fine Monday morning. Get yourself some coffee. Have a good week. But let's get into today's video. So last week I talked about picking up probably a GTX 1050 Ti. Here it is. We got it. So in today's video, we're just going to simply do a little overview of the card. Talk about some of the specs. We're going to talk about what we're upgrading from and just kind of some first impressions. I think we're going to get into the details of the benchmarks next week. But for this week, we're just going to do basically just an overview of the card and some uh, first impressions and comparisons from uh, what we had to what we have now. So getting into the details of it, this is the EVGA GTX 1050 Ti SC or super clocked. It does come with four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 120 memory bus, which gives us an effective clock of 7,000 megahertz. The bandwidth is about 112 gigabytes per second. The GPU itself has 768 CUDA cores. Uh, the base clock on this card is 1354. 1,354 megahertz and it's boosting up to 1,468 megahertz although I'm pretty sure I've seen it boost a little higher than that even already. Uh, it comes with all of the things that it comes with with a, being a 10 series so we've got G-Sync, we've got Game Stream, we've got GPU Boost 3.0 which has gotten us over that 1468 uh, boost clock We've got Vulkan, DirectX 12, PCIe, G PCIe Gen 3. On the outputs, we've got HDMI 2.0, DisplayPoint 1.4, and DualLink DVI. Also, if you'd like to, you could use EVGA's Precision X OC. I use MSI's Afterburner. It's just convenient and works with just about everything. So we are upgrading from an AMD HD6450, which has 512 megs of DDR3 memory. Uh, it came with the computer, and it's mostly so that the computer could support dual displays, as this has both DVI and HDMI. Now, you'll notice that I really can't play games that effectively with the original card in here, with this HD6450. In fact, I tried playing Overwatch and while I can technically play, it is a miserable experience. I could barely play on low settings with like nine to 12 frames per second. With the new 1050 Ti SC from EVGA that we have in here now, I can play Overwatch very comfortably at high, the high preset and I'm getting anywhere, I'm, I'm dipping at about 40 frames and I'm getting up to about 60 frames on this computer. I say frames, I should say FPS. One thing to note is that I am not gaming on a full HD 1080p display. I am gaming on what I had available to me, which wasn't much. And this is a 1440 by 900 monitor. I wanna say it's a 19 inch screen and it's just, something that I had that looks halfway okay and it plays games. So that's what we got here. Installation was fairly straightforward. Pop open the case, remove the old card, put the new card in. The beautiful thing about this is that it has no PCIe power connector, which means it only needs power from the CPU, drawing not even the full 75 watts most likely. but because we did slightly upgrade the power supply in a previous video, I am not concerned whatsoever. Uh, Ryan Shroud over at PC Part Picker actually happened to do a video where he went to Best Buy and purchased two computers off the shelf and put in the 1050 Ti into those 
and those had OEM cheapo power supplies. One of them as little as 240 watts if memory serves me right. So this thing is very power efficient, doesn't take much, and gives great performance. I know that there are plenty of other options. In fact, there might even be better options at this price point. Uh, my friend Son of a Tech happened to point out that the RX 460 or 470 even might have been a better choice. And I actually probably agree with him in terms of just pure price to performance. However, I have a good history with EVGA. EVGA was the first motherboard that I owned, which was the X58. Uh, not the X58 SLI and not the classified. It was the X58 for the win. That was the first PC I built, which with an i7 950, we overclocked it really great. And that EVGA X58 for the win was a fantastic board. In fact, I had to RMA it. They, they next day a replacement board and didn't require me to send mine in first. So I've had great customer support experience with EVGA. Secondly, they're known for being NVIDIA only cards. I still have a slight bias towards and on the side of NVIDIA cards. Over the last year for work purposes, I have had a lot of issues with AMD cards and driver issues and performance issues and application compatibility issues. I've just had a lot of issues with them. If we purchase the same systems but have the NVIDIA product in there, we don't have these issues. Now, I know that these things are subject to change and I admit fully that I do have a personal bias, but with this being the first major upgrade to the LMG and with this being still my hard earned money, just like it is for you, I want to be honest about why I chose what I chose. It's a company that I know and trust. It's a company that I've worked with for years and had lots of great customer support experience from. And it's a card and driver set that I'm familiar with and comfortable with as well. So all of those go into this decision for me. And a lot of these things are gonna go into this decision for you. Now, you might be on the complete opposite side of the fence. You might have had terrible experience with NVIDIA graphics cards. I get that. I can't fault you for that. It happens to everybody. Everybody has a bad experience with one company or the other. It just happens. And so if you were to go for something in this price point, the 470 or the 460 would be your two options. And I lean towards save just a little bit more and go just a step up and squeeze that budget and stretch a little bit more because you're gonna be a lot more happier over the longer haul. You know, when you're making upgrades to these kinds of machines and when you're working on them, there's a lot that you have to think about. This is the first major upgrade. The others were really easy, no brainers. Add more memory, upgrade the power supply, too easy peasy. The M.2 PCIe uh, M SATA drive didn't pan out, but that's okay. It was worth a shot, but it didn't pan out. So that's kind of how you're gonna be operating with an older machine like this. If this is your mom's old computer or your dad's old computer or grandma and grandpa's old computer or whatever, you know, if it's as old as this is, these are the things you have to consider and think about. Because right now we're trying to strike a balance. Performance and like gameplay quality versus being able to buy and play more games. So right now with this 1050 Ti, now we can go and we can play more games because we've got the card in here that's gonna give us a great baseline to play at a minimum on medium settings and in some games and on some titles. Same thing, I think. Titles, games, whatever. We're gonna be able to bump it up to high or maybe even ultra. So all of that said, this is where I am. Okay, so in conclusion, after having this card for literally two days and only one solid like hour and a half game session with this card, I'm happy so far. I've got some tweaking to do, got some overclocking to try to accomplish, and I've got some games to get installed on the LMG so that way we can get some benchmarks going. You know, we're making some progress because the holidays are here, we're getting good deals on stuff, this was one of them. So 
If you'd like to pick yourself up a 1050 Ti, I'll throw a link down in the description below. If you'd like to look at the 460 or the 470 from AMD, from Team Red, I'll throw links down there as well. And I will also throw links to a couple of videos that will help you get a better comparison. Thank you all for watching. I hope that this video wasn't too rambly for you, and I hope I made a little bit of sense. I hope I don't have to go re-back and re-edit and reshoot. And I hope that I see you all next week. I guess until next time, geek on.